Hi, here we're going to draw a basic profile, that is a person's face turned to the side. If you would like to draw a person's face looking straight out of the paper at you, then you want to go to the lesson on drawing a frontal portrait. This face is going to be turned to the side. All you're going to need for this is a sheet of paper, an ordinary pencil, and an eraser. Nothing special. When we draw, we generally draw using shapes whenever we can. It makes it a lot easier. We understand simple shapes, and although we don't really understand things as complicated as faces. So if we can break a face down into simple shapes, then we are much more likely to be successful at drawing one. First thing you want to do when you're drawing a profile is the shape of the head. All heads are ovals. Now, in a profile, you have to be a little more careful about how you do this oval than you would for any other kind of face. Let me show you what I mean. When you're drawing a frontal portrait like this, you just draw an egg shape, an oval, a standard oval like you learned in grade school. When you're drawing a profile, you need to modify that a little bit. Whichever side you want you actually the actual face to be on, the direction a person's actually looking, you want to make this side of the oval a little bit flatter than the other side of the oval, which would be the back of the head. The back of the head will bulge out more, the front of the head will be a little bit flatter. So you're going to have to modify your oval to make that happen. If you don't make that happen, it's not that big of a deal. You can always work your way around it. But we start with an oval for the shape of the head. Now what we need is some guidelines in order to get all the parts of the face in the right place. So we want to start by drawing a horizontal guideline straight across the middle of the head. That's going to show us where just about everything on the face goes. Next, we want to take the bottom half of the head and split it in half. With a little mark right there. That's about all we need. That's going to show us where the nose will come down to. And then we want to take the top part of the head and split it in half right about there. That's going to show us where the hairline will come down to. Now this middle guideline that goes straight across the middle and this guideline here that splits the bottom half of the head in half, those are pretty solid. You need to get those in the right place. This line for the hairline, it's negotiable. The hairline can move up a little higher and come down a little lower, but it will be in that ballpark. Okay, so now that you have your oval and you have your guidelines, we're going to start putting the parts of the face on here. We'll start with the nose. The nose is going to be a triangle shape. You're going to start here at the middle guideline, and you're going to draw it coming all the way down to the bottom guideline, but you're going to have it come out from the head, like that. And then instead of making a pointy triangle, you're going to round it a little bit at the end and have it come into the side of the head. That's what I mean by triangle. Three sides. One side is the curve of the oval, and then the two sides for the front of the nose and for the bottom of the nose. Next, you want to add the nostril on the nose. Now, we're looking to the side, so we can't see two nostrils on the face like we do here. Here's a nostril here on one side. There's a nostril on the other. When a person turns the face to the side, you can only see one of those nostrils. But they still go at the bottom of the nose. Now, in this case, the nostril is going to look kind of like the letter C. Backwards. If the person were turned the other direction, then this nostril would also be turned the other direction. It would look like the letter C as you would normally write it. And that's pretty much it for the nose. Now what we want, what we want to do is we want to do the eyes. When we were doing a frontal portrait, the eyes were oval shaped. But when you turn your head to the side, the apparent shape of that eye changes. And the eye looks like a triangle. Now that triangle is set back on the horizontal guideline. It's set back a little bit, a little tiny bit from the front of that oval. You have the flat side facing outwards, and then you have 
the two sides coming into a point toward the middle. That's the basic shape of that eye. A triangle with this side facing out, set back a little bit from the front of the head, and right on that middle guideline. Next we want to do the eyelid, which goes on the top of this eye. And it's basically a repeat of the same shape, it sticks out a little bit farther, and it's a lot more narrow. A triangle. On the bottom of this eyelid, we want to put the eyelashes. That's just a series of little hairs, but they point toward the front of the face. A series of little hairs going along the side, on the bottom of the eyelid. That's the eyelashes. Next, we want to draw the iris and the pupil. Now, when we look at the frontal portrait, the iris is the colored part of your eye, and the pupil is right in the middle of it. Well, when we look at somebody's face from the side, we don't see all that much distinction between the iris and the pupil. All we see is a flat oval on the front of that eye. We may get a little hint of the pupil inside that flat oval, but really all we're looking at is one shape, a flat oval on the front of the eye. Next, we want the eyebrows. They go over the eye, and just like in a frontal portrait, you can pretty much draw the eyebrows any way you want, as long as they go over that eye. That's pretty much it for the eye. Next thing we're going to draw is the ear. The ear also goes on the middle guideline. You notice how Everything's going on the middle guideline. The top of the nose, the eye goes on the middle guideline, and now the ear goes on the middle guideline. And the ear is pretty much in the middle of the head. People's ears might be a little closer to the front of the head or a little bit farther back, but they're not way back here. They're not up here attached to the eyeball either. So pretty much in the <clears throat> middle of the head, you have the ear. The top of the ear is at the middle guideline. And it comes down from there, and it'll come down to about where the bottom of the nose is. Inside the ear, you have the cartilage. And depending on which way the face is pointed, that cartilage will either look like a curvy capital R or a backwards curvy capital R. So there's the eyes, nose, and ears. Now we're gonna do the mouth. When we did the mouth on the frontal portrait, we drew a line and we drew shapes around the mouth. It's gonna be a little bit different in a profile. When we draw a profile, to draw the mouth, we're gonna start at the bottom of the nose. And we're just gonna make a gentle curve come down and out, kind of a copy of the way we did the nose, but smaller. Come down and out and then curve back in to the side of the head. That's the upper lip. Then we want to start at that uh, place where the upper lip stops and curve gently out and then back in to the side of the head. That's the lower lip. Now we also want to put a little line here between the two that shows the line of where the lips separate. Continuing down to the bottom of the head, we're going to draw the chin. That's going to start at the lower lip and then curve gently out and then back in to the bottom of the head. Now here's a thing about the chin. Sometimes, depending on how big you make the nose and how big you make the mouth, you may end up with a lot of chin down here. Well, you don't have to stick with that. You can start the chin, starting at the bottom of the lower lip, 
and you can draw the chin down as far as you think it ought to come, and then just come in whether you're at the bottom of that oval or not. You can always just erase the excess oval. Or come, sometimes you don't have enough space for the chin, where you can always make the chin come down lower than the bottom of the oval and bring it in. And then you can erase the line for the bottom of the oval. This is your drawing. You're in charge of it. You can make changes as changes are needed. So there's a chin. Next thing we want to do is do something with the shape of the front of the head. This looks really flat. It looks unnaturally flat. And for good reason, because starting here at the nose, our head tends to come out a little bit. So we're going to go to the top of the nose, curve gently out a little, and then curve gently back in and blend it very smoothly so that people won't notice with the top of the head. What you really want to avoid is making it look like the guy has a big bump on his forehead. Same thing for the chin. You don't want it to look like there's a big bump sticking out from his head. For that matter, for the mouth too. You don't want it to look like he has duck lips. That is something going boing, boing out like that. You don't want that to happen. Well, now we have the side of the head shaped nice and finely. We have a few more things we need to add. One of them is the neck. The neck is the trickiest part of this profile. It's only two lines, the front of the neck, the back of the neck. But you really need to get them in the right place for it to make sense. You need to give this person a little bit of chin, a little bit of space under his head. So you don't want the front of the neck all the way up here. You want to start it, oh, something like that. Let's give him a little bit of space here under his head for his chin. Then you want to draw the back of the neck, and you really just want to eyeball it and draw the back of the neck so it looks like that neck is strong enough to hold that person's head up. It's not a rule like it comes all the way back to the vertical guideline or any other particular place. Just make sure that neck looks strong enough to hold that person's head up. Okay, this profile is just about done. We're going to draw the hair now. I mentioned this first guideline here, the top guideline, that would be the hairline. You can make the hair come all the way down to that guideline, or it can be a little higher, or it can be a little lower, but it's got to be somewhere in that ballpark. The thing you want to avoid is the fallacy of making the hair only on the top of the head. The person starts looking very strange then. So we're going to have the hair come down to that top guideline. It's going to come across somewhat. And then we want the hair to come down to the ear at least. It's got to come down to the front of the ear. And then another important thing the hair needs to come down to is it needs to come at least down to the back of the neck. It can be longer. It can come below the back of the neck. It can come all the way down to the person's shoulders or beyond, but it needs to come at least down to the back of the neck or it's going to look very strange. Then the last thing you want to do with the hair of any real importance is you want to decide how high that hair is going to stand up off that person's head. And also when you're drawing hair, you wouldn't really be thinking about the hairstyle, about how this person's head is presented how this person's hair is presented. So we go, we have most of the parts of this profile done. There is one more thing you could add, but it's not mandatory, and that is the jawline. When you draw the jawline, you basically come from the bottom of the ear, bottom from the ear, down, and then forward, to underneath the front of the chin, like that. But oftentimes that jawline looks a little stark and you might want to soften it up by drawing only part of it. Or you may even want to not draw the, guy, the jawline at all. Well, we have just about everything we want here. Now what we have to do is erase our guidelines. Our guidelines in this case are the bottom part of this oval for the head, 
so where it crosses the neck. You want to get rid of that. And you definitely want to get rid of all of the front of that head, the oval for the front of that head. You want to get rid of all of that. Otherwise, it could cause potential problems when you're adding things in a more advanced stage of portrait drawing. So get rid of that line for the front of that oval. Get rid of that line underneath the hair as well. Now remember, these are things that aren't even mistakes. They're just part of building this portrait. This is why you need to draw very lightly when you're drawing anything. Because even things that are not mistakes may need to be erased. And then we have the horizontal guideline through the middle. We're going to get rid of that as well. It has done its job. We don't need it anymore. All right, there we are. That is a profile.